Good morning, y'all. Welcome to episode seven, which might be the last episode of the series. The gym is up and running. We've been open for about a month now. And this episode, you're going to get a first-hand account of what's been going on with the gym since we opened the doors. So thank you for tuning in, and welcome to episode seven. We opened up to the public September 1st. We're in it 26 days. It's been a crazy ride. It's, it's been exciting. It's been a grind. But it's been definitely a, a positive experience thus far. No idea at the amount of support that the community was going to give the gym. The East Austin community specifically, you know, they love the gym. One of the things that makes me really proud is like currently, just off the top of my head, if I were to take a guess, at least like 75% of our members or familia members, I call them family, you know, they're familia to me. At least 75% of them are born and raised Austinites. To me, that's sort of a testament that the community needed a space like this or has been wanting a space like this in regards to just a garage style gym located in the heart of East Austin. They wanted this because I talked to all of these, all of the members every single day and we We've already developed really close relationships and friendships, so I get a really good insight as to what brought them to the gym, and a lot of them just say there wasn't anything available like this, you're the only gym like this on the east side or anywhere near it. But it's definitely been a grind, you know? Um, this is currently like my new home, I live here. And it doesn't feel like work. It's just an opportunity for me to literally hang around and fuck around with all of my friends and like talk to new people and meet new people and just sh shoot the shit with every, every new member but yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're talking 16, 17, 18 hour days, and then we go, I go home and go immediately to bed, and I'm up at 4 a.m., and then right back at the gym at 5, and then another 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. day. So I do kind of miss my house. Like, I can't remember the last time I, like, just hung out at, on my couch. I don't really talk too much about her, but she is the rock and my anchor, and Tony, my awesome and amazing wife. She's been helping me tremendously, and I couldn't do it without her. <laughs> she worries about me not sleeping enough, so she, she'll open the gym a couple days a week so I can take naps here in the couch in the office. So I get to catch up a little bit and take some power naps every now and again when she's around and she's working out. But the weekends help if I can get through like Friday, Saturday and Sunday is when I get to catch up on, on my sleep. I didn't know what to expect when we opened the doors. What's been really interesting is how the Austin fitness community has embraced Lift ATX. The locally owned gyms, they've welcomed me with open arms. They've been supportive. A lot of the owners have reached out to me and have been nothing but supportive. We all have our own lane and we all bring something completely different to the table. My goal was just to make something absolutely authentic and real. And I think we're accomplishing that. And I think that's what's attracting a lot of local people is that it's definitely a vibe. Somebody said this, it's like, it feels like you're working out in your Theo's garage and that's literally what it feels like. I think that's what makes us unique and I think that's what's making the gym successful. We've only been open three weeks and like, my God, everybody's coming from all over Austin as far as from like San Antonio to Dallas to Houston just to come and check out the gym. That's been really, really cool. Like the, the, the groups that have come out like in packs like together have been awesome come out and they take over the gym and tear shit up and like they put on a show and it's really good for our younger members because we have a lot of people that are barely starting their fitness journey the younger members can look up to the more experienced people and like you know when you got power lifters that have been doing it for over a decade or even longer come in and are deadlifting seven eight hundred pounds and squatting five six seven hundred pounds and it's inspiring and it, and it just goes to show you that, you know, one day if I keep at it right, maybe I can squat as much as these guys are doing. So it's really, the coach in me really loves that. It doesn't take a lot of members to be inside the gym to make it feel like it's crowded. It doesn't take much at all. We're, we're not a big gym. We're big enough. I had to give a lot of thought into every specific equipment piece that needed to be in the gym because we were kind of limited on square footage. I wanted to open up the outside somehow, some way. And the easiest way to expand square footage for a lower cost was to add some sort of turf area. So I got a quote for a brand new turf, installed everything, and it was gonna cost like $15,000. And it was just like, there's no way. I kept hunting around and you know, the interwebs are an amazing, amazing place. I found a company out of San Antonio. They do recycled turf for residential and commercial and they had exactly what we needed. But the only downside of it was like, they literally drop it off. So it came in like four different rolls. Each roll weighed over 2,500 pounds. It was a task, it was a challenge, but we now have a 50 foot by 20 foot beautiful turfed area where people can stretch, where people can do abs, where people can do lunges away from all the machines and away from all the plates and everything. It's beautiful, it looks really beautiful. And 
everybody's been joking around that it's like a, an area for people to chisme, chismeando, which means basically uh, gossip and chill and everything. So there's a fair amount of that going on as well. But again, I mean, when that stuff happens, I just keep, I put a smile on my face because I know that there's a community here. I, I didn't realize how popular any of the merchandise that I've had was going to be. It's been very beneficial to like, you know, to, to just the business. Like I can't keep anything on the shelves. But at the same time, like I put a lot of thought into what I want to create and what I want to release and put the and put the gym's name on. People are just really excited to support, and they've been supporting. And I'm completely grateful for y'all's help. We've talked a lot about positive things, right? And like uh, a lot of accomplishments and a lot of successes, and with all of these really amazing things that have happened in the last 26 days. There's also been struggles, there's been obstacles, there's been uh, frustrations. Plumbing was definitely an issue, so when I got the space, it had one restroom and a little sink and that was it. And I knew that I wanted to add another restroom and a shower. So we did, you know, my plumber was awesome. Shout out to Isaac, Isaac Hernandez, plumbing. He, he came through, we built out a shower, we built out a, you know, another restroom and everything. And we also installed a water filling station, which is awesome. But the plumbing was an issue. If somebody was taking a shower and somebody was using the water station, the water pressure just went to shit. That was quickly an issue that needed to be resolved. But we fixed it, like it, we fixed it. The water pressure is no longer an issue. Everything works in sync. So uh, that was an issue for sure. In regards to COVID, uh, the members have been really good about using masks when, when needing to use masks. They've been really good about spraying down everything and wiping down everything. I mean, also, I'm really OCD and we've got sanitizing spray bottles all over the place, right? But I think a lot of people, uh, even though we are an open air, outdoor sort of space to work out in, I think people still have a little bit of priority when it comes to social distancing. And we are doing everything that we can abide by all city and state COVID guidelines like we have to and of course like any gym owner is going to know like racking your weights is is it's going to be an issue there's not a gym out there that uh doesn't have members that may or may forget or choose not to rack their weights so like that's something that we that i'm constantly monitoring you know shout out to jay at lace and found I, I put, you know, he did a little mural, I'm sure y'all have seen it, that says, rack your pincha weights, you know? Like, I, I also try not to take myself too seriously, and that's pretty funny. It's a pretty funny mural to see every single day, and hopefully it reminds some people. But it's a problem, or it's a little frustration that every gym owner is gonna experience forever. Thank y'all for tuning in to episode seven of the series. And also thank all of y'all for supporting and watching episode one through seven. Those of y'all that have watched every, every episode. We don't know when the next episode is gonna happen. The gym is up and running. Uh, stop by the gym, continue to spread the word of Lift ATX. And as always, strength and community, community and strength. So yeah, enjoy. That was fucking terrible. Welcome to episode seven which could possibly be the last episode of the season. Shit. Tired. Probably a month since you... I'm fucking tired.